wrote them in a very specific state of mind so that actually these stories and the characters that I can say that I created them but at the same time they really came to me. I saw them in this room, in this air and, um, and they came as appeared as very silent creatures, beings and I just felt that I have to give a voice to, for example, this woman who's been married for at least eight times and whose husbands have always been ma a man called Jan. It's the most common name in Estonia. And, uh, and this woman, um, well, he kind of confesses the tone is um, confessing like what what happened that uh, that uh, she married so many times she never wanted that wasn't her dream but um, it went as it went and there are several several reasons one morning he just couldn't wait for me to get up the pancakes were ready and the coffee getting cold he sat down softly on the edge of my bed and slid his left hand caressingly over my long, soft hair, shoulders and back. I awoke with a start. A wild rage came over me. I pounced on to his upper arm and before I understood what I was doing, I had bitten his whole arm off. <laughs> When we filed the divorce papers, <laughs> I cried bitterly. You should at least have snarled, he said as he was leaving, that you suddenly, just like that. Jan is now married to a frail actress. She certainly won't ever bite him. Her special talent is walking on water and uh, she discovered that it is a thing that she can improve the thing she can get better in and uh, that is what she does and uh, finding her balance on the stormy sea it is a symbol the image of um, finding balance in in love and in, in her life in general and uh, maybe loving somebody till the end of your li life in nowadays world is almost as impossible as walking on water but still possible so there's uh, plenty of hope in the story in the way i see it For several years I was studying literature in, in Tartu University and I read a lot. Suddenly I, I felt not inspired anymore and not enough inspired to write myself. And then I found a department in Tartu University called uh, Estonian and Comparative um, folklo folklo Folkloristics Department. It was a very cozy place with a lot of sofas and uh, teapots and I just felt so good there. I started to read, read a lot. Uh, folk tales, a lot of fairy tales, a lot of legends and most of all folk songs that became my master's topic in the end. And I found it so fresh, surprisingly fresh, the oral tradition. And, uh, oh. You got a cat. <laughs> I have a cat too. <laughs> <laughs> I also felt pain because what had been done to these fairy tales and folk songs during the Soviet times 
and not only in Soviet Union, I think it's everywhere. All these um, sweet Hollywood endings, everything that is just for children, and not even for children. I don't think children really care, <laughs> because me as a child, I wanted something totally different. I wanted something deep, something fresh, surprising. And all that I found in A Stone and Folk Tales that ha had never been published.